Hi, all of you awesome scuba divers out there. Welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine, your favorite place for the latest scuba diving news and gear reviews. Today, I'm taking a closer look at the SEAC IT500 ICE regulators. So the ICE in the name isn't a reference to the early 90s personality Vanilla Ice or Val Kilmer's character in Top Gun. It's because the first stage is fitted with an extra environmental seal for better performance in colder waters. The IT500 ICE is SEAC's current flagship regulator, their really fancy one, and it's really designed to be an all-rounder of a regulator. A regulator that you can dive at home with and travel with on your next tropical holiday. The first stage is a balanced diaphragm design, which means that it will deliver a constant breathing sensation with high airflow and high performance throughout all depth ranges as you go down and come back up. Four angled low pressure ports, two on either side, and two high pressure ports, one on either side. This section is the main difference between this ice version and the non-ice version. The regular version doesn't have this environmental seal cap, which helps to prevent ice from forming in colder waters and heavy use. The primary second stage is a classic design with both adjustable breathing and a venturi lever. The Dala breath gives you plenty of control of how easy or how hard it is to open up that valve when you're inhaling and the Venturi redirects airflow to either give you a really clean breathe so it's nice and smooth or it can actually interrupt the airflow so that the second stage is less likely to free flow whenever it's out of your mouth. A nice large purge button on the front is very easy to find even with chunky gloves and it's got a really nice breathe to it. The regulator is nice and smooth. Braided Miflex hoses on both the primary and the Octo are light and flexible and the Octo hose is the same day glow yellow as the front cover of the alternate so it's nice and bright. Your Octo is very similar in design to the primary, only you don't have the breathing adjustment and the Venturi switch is much smaller. So I'd probably just leave it set to the minus setting, the like pre-dive setting. Uh, it is just gonna be too fiddly to switch with very thick gloves. But if, you've, if you're diving somewhere nice and warm, then yeah, you can probably adjust that in the water. The IT500 ICE has an EN250A rating, which means that they've been tested to 50 meters and water temperatures as low as four degrees Celsius whilst breathing from both a primary and the alternate. The M first stage has an interstage pressure of about 9.8 bar, but it can range between 9.8 and 10.2, which is pretty standard, and it can deliver plenty of gas to a pair of divers. The first stage, primary and the octo, including the hoses, so in this kind of setup, uh, is just shy of 1.4 kilos for the DIN version. From what I could tell from the user manual, they uh, also have a two year, 200 dive hour service schedule, which is quite nice. Most standard regulators are one year, 100 dives, whichever comes first. Uh, so two years, 200 hours is quite nice to see, uh, but let's see how they arrive and what might come with it. This is how they arrive uh, in a little Ziploc bag uh, and then you get yourself a uh, regulator bag to keep them safe. Uh, you can store them in this, you can travel uh, them in this. It's, um, it's got some padding around it uh, to protect them from bumps and whatnot. Uh, zippered opening. Then on the inside, you have a book of words, uh, the, the usual yeah, instruction manual and uh, certificates and things. It will just tell you about each part of the, uh, the regulator and uh, like service schedules and that kind of stuff. So have a quick uh, browse through that. You get a little card, um, identification. So this I imagine is the serial numbers yeah, kind of serial numbers, date of purchase. You can uh, sort of fill that in, little um, card to, um, yeah, just keep all of that information in one place. You get your regulators themselves, Struth, and they've actually used the Velcro to, uh, to hold them in. Uh, it's rare that people use them. Um, yeah, on the inside of the bag, you get these little Velcro straps and you can, once you put them in, you just tie them around the hoses to stop the regulators from kind of moving around inside of the bag. And yeah, it, once it's empty, you can feel plenty of padding all around it on the walls, on the bottom and the top. And uh, yeah, little grab handle. Uh, the alternate, your Octo, 
doesn't come attached, um, but that's pretty quick and easy. Uh, all you have to do is just take out a port plug and then uh, and then screw it in and then just nip it up a little tight. And um, yeah, let's take a closer look at the regulators themselves. So yeah, let's take a quick look at the um, at the regulators themselves. I'll start with the first stage as always, because that's the, uh, the, the big bit that's doing most of the work. Uh, so yeah, right up here at the top, this whole section, because there's the IT500 and then the IT500 ICE, which is this version, uh, the ICE version has this extra cap on the top, uh, which has the environmental seal, and it just helps to prevent ice from forming over the top of it, and the environmental seal just prevents any contaminants like, um, like algae and salt crystals and stuff from getting inside of some of the chambers of the first stage, and through a lot of airflow, if there's water inside there, uh, then it's more likely to freeze and it stops certain parts from moving. So yeah, it's nice to have that environmental seal. Uh, four low pressure ports, two on either side. And as you can see, they're angled quite nicely. Uh, so even if you have chunky uh, hose protectors like this one, uh, they're nowhere near bumping into one another and actually changing the hoses, adding or removing them. You can get the spanners in and you're not risking scratching each other. Two high pressure ports, again, one on either side, and they're ever so slightly angled downwards. So if it's in this like upright position on your um, on your cylinder valve, then the, the high pressure hoses angle a little bit downwards away from the low pressure ports. So again, if you've got that transmitter, it's less likely to, uh, to bump up against things. This is the DIN version. All it's also available in, uh, in A clamp, obviously. And um, yeah, it's... it's it's a din, uh, din valve. The, um, the hose protectors, I quite like the hose protectors. It's one of those little features that you don't really think too much about, um, but they've um, they've kind of, two different materials on the um, on the hose protector is quite special. Normally it's it's just a very simple um, like piece of rubber and, and, and that's it. But no, SIAC have gone to a bit of effort to, uh, to make them a little bit fancy. Um, Miflex hoses. Uh, not just braided hoses, these are actually branded Miflex hoses. Uh, so they're nice and light, they're very flexible as well. So much easier to pack and, um, and lighter for travel. Coming down to the second stages. So the primary second stage, the, uh, the one that you typically breathe from, stainless steel front cover on this kind of shield, which is quite fancy. Um, and then all of this section is your purge button and it's soft and flexible. So even if you've got clunky gloves, uh, it's very easy to, uh, to find that button in an emergency. Two breathing adjustments. You've got your dial of breath, uh, which is quite long. Uh, most second stages, it's probably two or three rotations, if that. Uh, this one, you've got plenty of adjustment, which I suppose does give you a bit of fine tuning so you can get it just right. Uh, but if you just want to just like alternate between like maximum and minimum, uh, then um, yeah, it, it takes a little bit of time, but it still can be done. And it's kind of crenellated, uh, I think is the term. You've got these little notches around the side. So again, if you've got clunky gloves, diving in colder waters, it gives you something to, uh, to kind of twist. The Venturi switch, adjust the airflow inside of the second stage. So in the plus, it's probably gonna give you better airflow. So it's a nice smooth breathe, but if it ever comes out of your mouth, then switch it away from plus so that it interrupts the airflow and it just interrupts a, um, a free flow if it's likely to occur. Mouthpiece, pretty traditional SIAC mouthpiece, um, decent size, decent quality, it's all silicone. And then the exhaust T is quite open Usually you get some kind of venting in the uh, in the exhaust tee, but actually it's got uh, it's got plenty of space, and uh, and you can inspect that uh, that exhaust tee very easily, and you can also see how it's kind of held in place by the internal molding of this exhaust tee, so it is less likely to um, to like fold over on itself or let contaminants in. On the alternate. <coughs> Very similar in design, uh, except for the obvious uh, color cosmetics. You don't get that um, that stainless steel ring. It's just plastic in this version. Uh, you've obviously got that Dayglo yellow. It does have adjustable Venturi in a similar design, but it's much smaller. So that would be quite fiddly if you've got big, like five or seven mil gloves. Uh, I'd probably, if it's an Octo just sitting on your hip, I'd probably just leave it in that like negative um, position and just leave it there so it interrupts any uh, any air flows. You can still breathe from it, obviously. Uh, it just increases your work of breathing a little bit. Doesn't have breathing adjustment. 
it's not the end of the world it's an octo it kind of sits on your hip and just does as it's told um but yeah otherwise it's very much the uh, the same design little things kind of bug me about it um i'll talk about it in the uh, in the outro it's mainly the um the like the finishing on uh, on a lot of regulators uh someone very painstakingly goes through all the molding parts and just gets rid of all of this uh, this flashing the little extra um bits and the um uh, the big one for me is the um, uh, zip ties is that when you when you snip them off you should really trim off the uh, the sharp edges because this has quite a sharp um, section and when that goes in your mouth it's going to be right next to your lips and uh, and trust me your lips will find it um, but otherwise the the actual breathing it's very nice and smooth um it is it, a very nice breathing regulator um but yeah it, i'd probably spend a good like 10 minutes just like cleaning up some of the uh, some of the edges and uh, and they'd be a really nice set of regulators so who's the it500 ice for it's made for the stay-at-home diver who needs that cold water performance and reliability if you find yourself diving in waters colder than 10 degrees relatively frequently then it's better to have that cold water seal it will add a small amount of weight to your regulator for travel but if it helps to prevent ice from forming over that opening in the top of the first stage in an emergency, that's a small price to pay that I'd certainly be willing to. They do have a very nice breathe. Hats off to the technicians who designed the airflow. It's nice and smooth. Some regulators you can get a bit of a like raspy breathe, but no, this is nice and pleasant. They don't have the finest of finishes. Um, small things like the logo uh, was stuck on a little bit wonky on the first stage. Uh, there was still a little bit of flashing that hadn't been removed from some of the plastic parts and the zip ties that hold the mouthpiece on still have a pointy bit that I'd want to trim. Uh, a lot of those are purely cosmetic. Uh, the logo is likely to fall off after a good few dives anyway and the only real sharp edges that really worry me are the ones on that zip tie because it's quite close to your lip so I'd definitely be uh, trimming that up. Um, they don't affect the performance of the regulators or the breathe in any way. Uh, I just spend a little bit of time when I first get them just to trim up those edges just to make them a bit nicer. This set with the primary and the alternate retail for just shy of $650 or 465 euros, uh, which is actually a really fair price for almost a complete set of regulators uh, all you have to do is just add any bcd or dry suit hoses and your gauges maybe a transmitter um but yeah that's a really really fair price for a nice breathing set of regulators that are cold water rated they also have that two-year surface interval uh, that further reduces your ongoing cost of owning the regulators um other than some of the finishing um i can't really fault them in any meaningful way uh, i'd certainly be happy diving with them here at home and packing them for a trip abroad um, i used to use siak regulators uh when i was uh, when i was teaching years ago uh, so yeah they're a good solid brand but let me know what you think about the it500 ice in the comment section and if you want to learn more then you can head over to their website siaksub.com and of course find your nearest siak dealer on their website then head over to our website scubadivermag.com uh, like this video and subscribe to the channel for more like this thank you for watching everybody and of course safe diving <laughs>